So this is, I don't know if it's a high level question or this is a much more in-depth question, but this is a one question which has been asked a lot nowadays in the interview. What is PDB or something called a pot disruption budget? And what is the purpose of this? So if anyone of you who is using Kubernetes, anyone know what is the use of this pot disruption budget? So the pod description budget is all about if you're running a multiple replica of your application or pod. So this pod description budget is make sure how many replicas or the or you can define the percentage uh, must be up and running in any case. So so that is I think we can define in the pod description budget. So let's say we have the five replicas that is running and and I'm I'm gonna mention that in uh, in the worst case, three at least should be or must be running. So that is something for description is comes to the picture to make sure the availability of your application. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mohit. Yeah. So this is one question which I mean it's a kind of a misleading because not only for the rest of the world, even uh, the SRE team they contact me and they do not understand one fundamental thing, which is called voluntarily interruption and non-voluntary or is this one particular word for that I forget that uh, voluntary and yeah just non-voluntary so what do i mean by voluntary so like Mohit has mentioned, I have defined that at least three pods should be up and running in my cluster, right? So, I, okay, let's see with the help of this one itself. Okay. So if you look at here, we have just spun up a cluster and we have this one control plane node and two worker node, right? And any one of you who is using Kubernetes for some time, you know that any workload, we cannot do a spin up on the, uh, the control plane node. Like for example, if I'm going to spin up one container or a pod right now, I cannot spin up on this control plane node. Anyone know what is the reason behind that? So if I'm going to start a pod right now, it either go to this worker or this worker too. It will never go to this control plane node. Anyone know what is the reason behind that? Taint. Exactly, taint. So if you see here, yeah, I mean, scheduling, I can say yes, but I mean, the correct term is called taint. So see here the taints. It has set up a taint call, no schedule. If I remove this one, then I can schedule a node on the uh, on this control plane. And there are ways like you just need to put Kubernetes taint and uh, minus at the end of it, and then it will become schedulable. But by default, you cannot schedule a node on the, that's why they said, yeah, unschedulable equal to false, that this node cannot be used to schedule a pod. Okay. Now coming back to our original question, like pod disruption budget. So I have a two nodes or a three node cluster, one control plane where I cannot schedule a, my workload and two worker node. So this is where we are going to schedule our work. Okay. And a work means containers or a pod or whatever it is. Right. Now let's say I, I am doing some patching and in that patching, I need to patch this node. So a correct terminology to remove a node. So, okay. So before doing a patching or before doing any kind of a maintenance operation, I need to take this node out of the cluster, right? And that operation is called drain, drain. When I drain the node out of the cluster, that means any of the pod cannot be scheduled in this cluster. Okay. So what is going to happen? Let me show you with the help of the this guy. Let me take this guy. Okay, so let's say I am patching this host. Okay, and 
just to make thing complicated let's say the four pod is already been scheduled on this particular host okay so i perform the drain drain means now onwards any pod cannot be scheduled on this particular host and at the same time all these four pod which is been scheduled on this particular host will need to move to some other ho uh, host on the cluster right so these pod will be moved to this my worker cluster too right the reason for that because we want the application to be up and running at all the time right so if i am patching this host ideal case there should be like two pod scheduled on this node and two pod will be scheduled on this node but i'm just taking a worst case let's say all the four pod which is being scheduled on this particular host right zero pod on this one so when i drain the node what is going to happen and we are going to see this with the help of our one practical example all the four which is all the four pod which is being scheduled on this host is going to be moved to this particular host and this will become unschedulable now this is where the whole problem gets started right all these four if four pod is going to move at the same time to this host this is going to bring a downtime right so what we are going to do we are going to schedule something called pod disruption budget pdb so in pdb if like mohit has mentioned we can specify a limit or we can specify a budget let's say 50% okay so if i say 50% that means for four pod the 50% is two right at that time it can only interrupt two hosts two pods so two pods at a time will move to this particular cluster from from this host to this host and the remaining two pod unless or until this two pods will be up and running then only after that the other two pods will be move out from this particular cluster from this particular host okay if this pod budget uh, disruption budget is not there all the four pod which is running on this host will be moved directly to this particular node okay i know this is a kind of a confusing even the first time when i read about this concept this seems to be confusing to me so let's see this with the help of an example okay so this is my uh, cluster setup let me try to create a deployment so what exactly i am doing it over here let's stick to the same one so anyone who is new to the kubernetes world we are creating a deployment which under the hood is going to create a replica set and then it create a pod so pod is what the fundamental unit is so we are creating a four pods for the image ingenex okay so let's do it so it's created okay so the four are four pods are getting created and if you want to see where exactly they are going to be spin it up you need to use something called hyphen o wide and you see here like i mentioned earlier it's going to be evenly distributed two on worker node a uh, one and two on worker node two this one and this one so let all of them will become so long they all are running okay so far everything looks good right we do not we do not have any pod disruption budget nothing is there okay now let's say i need to patch this particular node okay so what exactly i am going to do i will do kubectl drain and this host or this one right so i have this daemon set up and running so i need to do something called ignore daemon set okay so now this node has been evicted and if you run this you will see this node is unschedulable scheduling disable on this node because i have drained this node out of my cluster now the thing which happened that all the two pods or the pod which is running on that worker node 1 is now scheduled on worker node 2 okay everything is good so far right that is what we wanted right our pod should be up and running somewhere it doesn't matter where exactly it is going to run okay now 
get nodes and let me do one thing let me uncordon it uncordon me i want to make sure that this pod in future is going to be uh, i mean scheduling will be unable on this pod uh, on this host now on this node okay so i enable the scheduling back on this particular node what do you guys think where exactly all the like for example when we do the draining all the pod move to this uh, this particular host or node now i have enabled the scheduling back to this particular node right my worker do you guys think that all the pods now scheduled to this node or this has been still on this particular node itself i guess it's still running on worker 2 yep so let's see still running on worker 2 everything is fine so far because i want it to be running somewhere okay now let's set up something called a pod disruption budget and i'm pretty bad in remembering all these things so i always go with this help option so kubectl create pdb hyphen hyphen l and there are two ways you can set that up first thing is we can set it up minimum available so i want that at least one of my pod to be available all the time or i can set it up in terms of percentage like if i have 10 pods in the cluster out of that 50 percent should be up and running all the time so which means like in our case four means two two pods should be up and running so let's set up this one so i can say this one and selector i can i can show you so cube ctl create pdb that is pod disruption budget the name of the budget and then i need to select a selector i, I will show you what exactly a selector is and minimum available is 50 percent that means out of that half of that should be always available now at pod hyphen hyphen show labels so when you create a kubernetes cluster there is some always some tag i mean in the simplest words think of it like a tag there is a tag which has been assigned to your host or your pod and here you can see the app equal to nginx new which has been assigned by the kubernetes itself so in order for pdb to know for which uh, pod i need to implement this budget i need to give this selector or the label i mean think of it if you are coming from the aws world that i need to specify a way to identify this pod and that's what i'm doing it over here so i created this pod disruption budget and in order to check that so i will say the minimum available should be 50 percent all the time okay now get back to our node again right get back to our pod Currently, all my pods, they are running on my cluster worker too. Okay. Let's try to do, now let's take a condition where I want to take out this node out of my cluster because I want to patch this node. But all my pods should are running on this cluster. So in case if PDB is not present, it will try to move all these pods directly to this worker node one. This one. But now I have the PDB in place. Okay, I again need to do that. Ignore daemon set. I will spoke about this daemon set just in one few seconds. See, because of the pod disruption budget set, it will not move all of the pod in one go to work and node. It will first move two pods, right? So your service should be up and running. And after that, it is going to move the other two pods. Eventually, it is going to move all the pods if that node has a capacity to handle it. Otherwise, this is going to fail. But it is not going to do at a single go. It is going to break it. Okay, first move two pods. It should be up and running on the other host. It should be up and running here. And then when it is up and running, it's going to move the other two pods. So that is how it is going to save you for any downtime. Okay. Before I take any question, let me tell you one other thing 
voluntary means this. I know I am going to perform a patching on this node where my pods are running, and then I am moving all these pods to the different node. Non volunteering means in case if my node where the pod is running crash. Okay, so this worker node where my pod is running, let's say this worker node got crashed. In this case, the PDB is not going to take effect. Okay. This is clear in the Kubernetes documentation. I don't know why people got confused regarding this one, but this is clear. If the node got crashed, there's no way PDB is going to be implemented because at that time PDB has no idea. But if you are doing the voluntarily, like you are running the, those drain command to take the node out of the cluster. In that case, the PDB will take into account. Okay. Uh, this is one question which has been asked a lot and lot of time nowadays during the interview so just keep an eye on it uh, 